Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. <coughs> Former U.S. President Richard Nixon stopped backing the dollar with gold in the 1970s, changing global finance. This decision still echoes in Greece, Ireland and the U.S. some 40 years on. Mining Weekly editor Martin Kremer is in the studio to tell us more. Welcome, Martin. Thanks, Shannon. Let's start by discussing why the U.S. Um, left the gold standard. Well, what the Bretton Woods Agreement determined was that America was the standard. So <coughs> that dollar was backed by gold. And if anyone else held dollars around the world, that was seen as the powerful currency. Uh, and if you wanted to cash in, you could get your gold, you know, $35 an ounce. So the currency was underpinned by, by a fixed value. But this was beginning to backfire on the United States because after the war, Japan and, and Germany were starting to resurge and the economies were starting to grow. They were starting to export. So they were then <coughs> doing a lot of the uh, product manufacture and selling it into to the United States with the result that, you know, if the world had started calling for that gold, America might not have been able to pay, particularly since that America fixed the price of gold at $35 an ounce. But there were indications in Europe that uh, people that used gold, jewelry makers and dentists were prepared to pay $40. So that uh, gave the Americans a big scare. And the, the power broking of President Nixon was huge. He wanted to be elected president and he wanted nothing to stop him. And he wasn't going to allow the rules of the game to stop him. And so he brought in some powerful figures, notably uh, Connolly from mm -hmm. Texas, who forced through um, this split where they cut the umbilical cord with the gold and actually got raving reviews in the media because it seemed such a patriotic, pro-American thing to do. But it set off a bout of merciless uh, inflation. Now, speaking of that, how did that lead to the instability we see in the current times? Well. You know, this underpin and the standard that America had created by uh, the Bretton Woods Agreement gave some stability uh, to, to world currencies, to, to the monetary system. But with the umbilical cord being cut by the Americans, it started a bout of volatility elsewhere. You know, and eventually it led to the Europeans developing their own currency for Europe but again, with no fixed underpin. Mm. And we see now that volatility returning. We see the problems in Greece going to Ireland, to Italy, to Spain, where there, there's no uh, sort of proper foundation mm. for the value of, of these currencies. And that decision by Nixon in 1971 is still having a, an effect today. Now, is there a possibility of us returning to a gold standard? Well, there are some people who hint at some sort of standard, you know, even if it's not returning fully to the gold standard, because it would be, I think, impossible if you do the maths. You know, I don't think there's been enough gold produced mm. to underpin all the money that's been printed. You know, they've been printing money as if it was going out of fashion. I think it, even if you got all the gold in the world, uh, it would probably not even underpin the United States of America's dollar, you know, let alone all the other currencies. So at this point, it seems as though mathematically that would be impossible. And, you know, a lot of countries went off the gold standard because that very firm foundation also creates problems. We know in South Africa, we went off in 1933. I mean, being on the gold standard almost destroyed this country. Mm. Uh, and we had uh, Tielman Roos who uh, left the bench. He was a judge. You know, he left the bench and he went and stood on the Johannesburg uh, steps and he harangued people to a point where the, the uh, ordinary man in the street was so against this uh, bad economy that eventually, you know, South Africa went off the gold standard, I think, in 1933. But that was, that was very difficult circumstances during that depression. Mm. Uh, and then, of course, other countries uh, left that gold standard and... Um, Probably it's not the ideal way to do something, but perhaps there could be a mixture of gold and other valuables that, that could form some sort of a basis for uh, world money that would get rid of this uh, volatility. I mean, we, we're seeing the volatility in South Africa. Mm. You know, uh, our industries are being badly hurt. 
I mean, even if you look at some of the uh, metals prices, like, uh, say, the platinum price, mm -hmm. some of the operations are closing. I mean, we see, you know, Aquarius uh, closing its Blue Ridge mine. Why? Because of this currency and the volatility. And, and now that it's closed it on the basis that, you know, it needed about, I think, uh, 12,000 rand per ounce and it, uh, it, it dropped to 9,000 something rand per ounce. On the basis of that, they decided to cease operations and now to actually put it behind them as if this mine is never going to, to return. You know, th there are banks invested in that, there are black economic empowerment <laughs> companies invested in that. It's, it's quite a a rough ride for them and it's all around the currency and the volatility and now as they turn their back on it you see the rand start softening again mm. to a point where it's going to about uh, 10,400 rand uh, per ounce of platinum which may even I doubt whether they'd reconsider it now but perhaps that softening will mean that they m they made a mistake yeah. <laughs> you know they've closed this thing too but that's what you have to do you know people are having to get on Valium and Prozac to run businesses mm. because uh, things are up and down and, and to be a CEO, you take his decisions and it invariably you make a mistake. Mm. You take the wrong decision and it's all around these currencies, not around the fundamental mining and taking the metals and minerals out of the ground and selling it. All those processes are in place, but they get, they fall into red ink you know, because of these currencies. So so this instability is very hard o on a country like South Africa mm -hmm. and many other countries. So it would be, I think it would be wholly unwholesome to get some sort of level that you had. Maybe just having a gold standard is too rigid, but perhaps they could think up something new that would give a little bit more reality to your money. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it just becomes paper, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And, you know, you might reach a point where you keep on postponing the inevitable that, you know, you, you have to take a tough decision and not just keep printing money. Maybe you, you reach the point where you actually do so much damage because that value just disappears. I mean, we've seen during war periods in, in, um, in Germany, mm. uh, that Deutsche Mark, the value was, it was useless. I mean, you to get a loaf of bread, you'd have to put uh, a wheelbarrow full of Deutsche Marks uh, <coughs> or you'd have to fill a wheelbarrow with Deutsche Marks and, and go to the shop to mm. get yourself a loaf of bread. You know, it, it, it goes to a ridiculous point. So it is a mark of our civilization, you know, to try to protect the value of your currency. But, but South Africa is like a small cork on a big ocean, you know, bouncing up and down. And so we're looking for um, a big player to set the standard. The United States was the standard. But we had a person like Nixon who was politically ambitious and he was prepared to knock everything down rather than have unemployment or at the time that, that he was going to be elected, even if it set off inflation. You know, he was quite prepared to have inflation provided he got himself elected, which he did. Mm -hmm. And uh, he used um, uh, Texas uh, Governor Connolly, who knew nothing about finances mm -hmm. but had a huge ego. And he could uh, turn this into something that looked like it was pro-American to the extent that the New York Times and the papers, you know, said this was a wonderful idea. But the chickens have come home to roost. You know, now <coughs> the uh, governor of the Federal Reserve, Ben Bernanke, he's having to deal with all this. You know, and he's taking on the Milton Friedman idea that uh, you can soften it by printing more money. But there has to be a limit to that. Mm if there is nothing underpinning the value of that money but paper. Mm. You know, it seems quite hollow. So hopefully the wise men of the world will come up with something different uh, to try and create more stability here. Yeah, because when we talk about our currencies, the worst thing is the volatility, the going up and down. You know, if it stays strong, then you know where you are and you can build your business around that. Mm. It's, it's sometimes very hard. People are saying that um, our currency may be, you know, unrealistically valued. I think one commentator said this morning to the tune of about 20%. You know, that would make a big difference mm -hmm. if it 
there was a 20% difference in it. it. It's the difference between a lot of people in being employed and a lot of people being on the streets, mm -hmm. you know, businesses making profits. Being, and it, it seems artificial, you know, it seems hard. It seems as though to be part of this first division in the world, to play in the first division of the monetary game, <coughs> there are some guys who take a lot of bruises. I mean, if you look at China now, they almost like the Americans were with the gold. They would mm. fix that gold price, $35 an ounce. I mean, uh, we lived through in South Africa, gold price was $35 an ounce. It did not budge. Mm. And so everything then centered on that level. So you didn't have such extreme inflation. <coughs> you know, Nixon set off this great inflation. I mean, by the time Carter got in, President Carter, the inflation was running at 15%. Mm. You know, that's enough to flatten you. Mm. So you have to deal with it. And, and then the world realized that it's the federal banks, it's the central banks that can deal with that inflation. And again, Milton Friedman, the idea uh, of that economist came through where the, the central banks must deal with inflation. But you can see the consequences of that too. Uh, you know, sometimes people, um, like in the trade union business, they urge this, the Federal Reserve not to be too harsh on inflation, let it run, just like mm. Nixon, mm. you know, was wanting to do. So you've got to create this balance, yeah. and hopefully the world will be able to arrive at a balance, you know, for the good of everybody. Because I was saying, China now, you know, it won't allow its currency to float. So it gives it an unfair advantage. Mm. If China produces a product in that currency environment, a low currency, it is able to export it gives it an unfair advantage. I mean, if we had a low currency, yeah, we'd also be in the pound seats to export. Suddenly, our factories would, would start going. But no, we, as a small country, we float our currency, so we bob up and down. Mm. China, as a big central command, it's refusing to do that because it's saying, oh, the consequences would be so huge. So, you know, there's not really justice in this monetary system, mm. and it, it has real implications for jobs, for people, for lives, for roofs overhead, for food. So I think that hopefully the world will sit down and come to some sort of an arrangement, even if it's less flexible. I mean, more flexible than mm. what the gold standard was. Perhaps that was too, that was inflexible. Mm. You know, you need a margin, but maybe they could have a basket arrangement where uh, there uh, is some underpin for, for global currencies and for individual national currencies. Well, thank you very much, Martin. I hope that helped some people understand the situation. Thanks very much. It's a great pleasure, Shannon. That's the show for today. Join us again next time for more news and insights into what's happening in the mining world.